first up, we're going to set up the automation account. So let's create a resource group if you don't already have one. I'm going to call mine RG-Automation. Then we'll create an automation account. I'll call mine AA-Manage that entity and let it deploy. Now, we'll need a few modules to be able to connect to Exchange, Azure, and Graph. So click on Modules, Add a Module, and search for Azure AD. I'm using PowerShell 5.1 for this example, but feel free to use whatever you prefer. Next, we'll add Exchange Online Management and then Microsoft.Graph.Authentication. Wait for the Graph Authentication module to be installed, and then we can add all the Graph modules we need. In my case, I'll do a call to get all users using the get mg user commandlet. If you look up the specific commandlet you want to use in the documentation, you can see which module it requires. Another way would be to use the API directly instead of with the commandlet. In that case, you wouldn't need any graph modules. So just to finish off the module installations, I'll add microsoft.graph.users and wait for that to install. If you scroll down to account settings, you'll see identity. This will show us whether the managed identity is enabled and what the object ID of it is. This is basically an automatically added service principle that is managed by Azure, so you don't have to store any credentials. There are two kinds, the first one being system assigned, which is what we'll be using today. It is tied to the lifecycle of this resource. If we delete the automation account, it'll be deleted as well, and it can only be used on this resource. The second kind is user assigned. This means you can create your own managed identity and assign it to multiple resources. If you want to learn more about that, I'll post a link in the description for the documentation. For now, let's copy the object ID as we will need it later when assigning permissions. But before we look at permissions, I want to create a runbook and show you how we'll connect in PowerShell. Let's just give the runbook a name, select PowerShell as the runbook type, and pick a runtime version. Make sure it's the same as the modules you installed earlier. This script is how I'll connect to the different services and test that they work. Connect-ExchangeOnline needs the managed identity switch and the organization you're connecting to. This will always be the on Microsoft domain connected to the tenant. Then we'll fetch the mailboxes and store it in a variable. And if that variable is not empty, we'll output some text. Connecting to Azure AD is very similar, but we only need the identity switch, which we'll add to connect-ac account. Be mindful that this doesn't allow access to all the old Azure AD commandlets. Unfortunately, it does not support managed identity, so you might have to find some substitutions in the AC library instead of what you're used to. The good thing is that by now you can do most of the things you'll need with either Graph or AC. Graph, just like AC, can be connected to using the same identity switch. In case you want to use the API directly and not the command list, you can get an access token from AC by using get AC access token dash resource type name MS Graph, and then call the API as normal with that bearer token. Now, if we start this runbook, it will give an unauthorized error. This is because the managed identity hasn't been given any permissions yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. A managed identity needs permissions just like a user and a service principal does. The permissions vary for the different connections I'm gonna show in this video and will overlap slightly. When connecting to Exchange Online, you'll need one of the following permissions shown here. Just for demonstration's sake, I'll assign my managed identity the Exchange Administrator row. I will do this just as I would assign it to any user in the portal. The permissions for the Exchange Online connection will work for AC and Graph as well but graph permissions won't work for the Exchange Online connection. So just keep that in mind. Now for Exchange Online, we'll also need to assign exchange.manage.app, which can only be done using PowerShell. So open up PowerShell, let's connect to graph with the scope of app role assignment.readwrite.all. And let's store the object ID of the managed identity in a variable called mi app ID. Then I'll paste the parameters we need. I'll leave a link to a Git repository where you can view all the PowerShell commands I've used in this video. Now, I found these particular commands in an article by the Lazy Administrator. So if you want more in-depth information regarding this part, check out the link to the article in the description. What we're passing into some parameters here is the reference to our managed identity. And then we're adding the exchange.manage as app API permission to it. The resource ID is what tells the call that we want to assign permissions to the exchange online API. And the app role ID will be the specific permission we want from set resource. Now to assign it, we'll call new MG service principal app role assigned to and pass in the parameters. This permission is necessary for app authentication with Exchange Online. So now we have a role assigned to our managed identity and we've given it permission to manage Exchange as an app. If your script only needs the Exchange Online module, 
then you're good to go by now. In case you need AC or Graph alongside, the Exchange Administrator role will also give Graph access to quite a few commands. The proper way if you only use AC or Graph would be to just assign permissions needed for the tasks you want to perform. If we have a script that uses Graph or AC, and like our example just needs to get a list of users, we will need the user.read.all permission as shown in the documentation on get mg user. For this we'll also need to use PowerShell. We can connect to Graph with the same scopes as previously, and we will still need the object ID of the managed identity. Then we need a reference to the Graph Aggregator service. We want a reference to this because from that we can get the ID of the different Graph roles. We'll do this by searching through our app roles by piping it into where object and having it return where the value of app role is equal to our wanted permission. In this case, user.read.all. If you look at the app role that was returned, you can see the allowed member type is application, since we won't be getting any user consent in our script. Then we can assign the role to our managed identity by using new mg service principal app role assignment. The service principal ID and the principal ID will both be the object ID of our managed identity. The app role ID will be the ID of the role we got from our search and the resource will be a reference to the graph aggregator service ID. If we head over to entry ID and look at our enterprise applications, we can find the managed identity and see the two permissions we've given it so far. To give it a different permission, substitute user.read.all for something different in the commands I showed you. Now we can head back to our demo code, and if we run a test again, it will show us that we're connected and it has fetched the users with Exchange Online, with AC, and with Graph, meaning our permission assignment worked as intended, and so we've reached the end of this video. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more similar content, and I hope this helped you out.